On this episode of Hands on Cars, Kevin shows you how to beef up the weak link on Zed Sled and millions of other GM vehicles, the infamous and much maligned 10 bolt rear axle. Then he takes you to a hot rod shop that's building an AMX concept car. Thanks for watching Hands On Cars. Today, we're going to address a weak link with this project. This is Zed Sled. It's going to have modern LS power. Potential weak link is the factory rear axle. Check it out. Now, GM pooped out nearly 300,000 of these cars in 1978, and this is the rear axle that came in 99% of them. This is a GM 10-bolt rear axle with uh, eight and a half inch ring gear and from the factory this Z28 came with a 373 ratio and limited slip. This one's been changed to a three, uh, 255 and a open differential which sucks for traction out of the hole and the high gear ratio is going to be a dog on launch. We want to upgrade this and we've already kind of started so check these out. Look at this. I started off by media blasting the axle assembly and bathing it in Eastwood's one-to-one -one epoxy. Then, with it set on a stand, we went to town welding the axle tubes to the center section. Now you can see here where the weld bead is, and this dimple right here is the only way that this tube was attached to the center section. So this right here is a really nice upgrade, but you got to be careful not to bend the tubes. We got lucky, ours are straight. So with a nice little upgrade on the rear housing itself done, we can address the components one by one, starting with the axles. We're upgrading from a 28 spline axle to these Moser street axles, which are a 30 spline and a harder composition. Then we are getting away from that peg leg open differential with this Eaton True Track. It's a limited slip. It's actually a locker that releases on turns, so it's a clutchless locking rear differential that'll never wear out, no more clutch packs to wear out, no more limited slip additive, and uh, this thing is going to live, well, it's probably going to live in the car as long as the car lives. Now for a ring gear, we're staying with the eight and a half inch ring gear, but this is a 373 combination of ring and pinion, and this will really get us out of the hole nicely and work very well with our 4L80 four-speed automatic transmission. We got an installation kit from an online retailer that includes side bearings, pinion bearings, all the seals you need, as well as a crush sleeve and a pinion bolt. Now, don't try and reuse bearings, even if you are in a budget. It's just not worth the risk, and they're not that expensive. It's worth it to rebuild it right. We also got new wheel studs to press into the axles, and again, we could hammer the old ones out, I suppose, but um, the truth is, um, these are ARP. They're going to be bulletproof. They're going to last as long as the car doesn't. It's going to be safe. We want safe. We don't want to die in a fiery wreck in the median. As well as the appropriate gear lube, axle bearing grease, and cleaners that we're going to need to do this job, we also picked up a rear differential cover. Now, this essentially is going to do exactly the same job as the sheet metal one. We could have reused it, but this one wasn't that expensive, and it looks a whole lot better just in case somebody ever looks underneath the car, and we want to show off just a bit. So. Before we install this stuff, there's a little bit of cleanup to do on that car, getting rid of the bearings and uh, just some surface prep. Ha! Ah, seal's gone. Sometimes you can get lucky and seals pop out with a slide hammer. Us, not so lucky. They disintegrated, but hey, this is hot rotting and there's always a way. Now here's where we're gonna have to get a little creative. I'm taking the fiberglass tape from my hot coat kit. And put it here to protect the inner axle. So what I'm finna do, get ugly with this. That way, grinding or welding sparks aren't gonna ruin that machine surface. We're gonna sacrifice a grade five bolt Set it in the gully. 
Using my MiG-175, I tack the bolt into the bearing cage while it's still in the axle housing. This gives me something to pull against and introduces some heat into the parts, hopefully releasing them from their locked-in position. <laughs> yeah, take that. And now, thanks to the fiberglass tape from the hot coat system, my surface here is perfect, unpitted, and ready for the new bearing to be installed. But remember, we're also doing a disc brake conversion, so this drum brake backing plate's got to come off, too. After a little housekeeping with a wire brush, I'll disassemble the differential, making sure to keep track of the location of the side spacers, shims, and retainers. Now sometimes a carrier needs a little bit of finessing to get it out. BFB helps a lot. And since this is now a boat anchor, we don't have to worry too much about keeping track of everything. And these side shims are symmetrical, so they can be put back where they came from, but it's not critical they're organized. We're starting fresh. We're starting fresh. And it's a good feeling because everything's pretty okay. So since our axle was coated in one-to-one -one epoxy, we saw this as an opportunity to really enhance the appearance, again, of the underside of the car. We pre-cleaned everything and then scuffed with a red scuffing pad, masked up all the parts we didn't want overspray on, and sprayed on three coats of 2K Aerospray chassis black with a gloss black finish. This is gonna provide a nice contrast to the bed liner on the underside of the vehicle and give a really nice accent to all the shiny aluminum stuff on this system. It's pretty important that you wipe everything down that you're gonna assemble. They're shipped in a coating that prevents corrosion if it sits on a loading dock, but it might interfere the proper performance, so a bit of chassis clean works great for your parts. You also want to run a flat file over top of the ring gear just to make sure that everything is machined. There's no stick up, there's no burrs. You cause run out on this ring gear. That would be really bad. You also maybe want to just double check your carrier. Everything looks good, we're cleaned off, we're ready to have a mating surface, yes. Now I'm sure everybody knows the old trick about using an old bearing to, uh, to press on the new bearing. You gotta cut the cage off. Well, in our case, since we're upgrading from a 28 spline axle to a 30 spline axle, the carrier's got a different outside diameter. So the old cage didn't work, keep them. They're always coming in handy for things that you gotta press on in the future. So kinda keep stock of these, maybe write on them what they are. In our case, I had to buy a new bearing. Cut the cage off of it. You know, it's sacrificed. So what, it was seven bucks. Now I can install my parts. I'm gonna keep the smaller side to the smaller side, proper orientation. I've got a flat plate on top just to keep a smooth and even contact. And we let this beast do its job. There you go. You want to check and make sure everything's seated correctly so you don't damage the bearing. There we go. Nice. Now you may have noticed that I prepped my ring gear and put the side bearings in first. That's just to avoid any possibility that I might damage the tooth on the ring gear. Get the bearing set and in place. And let me get a little bit of our resistance. I know it's seated. Always good to use a new set of ring gear bolts and run them through. Make sure the threads are clean or use a tap. Just make sure your threads are clean. There's nothing that's going to interfere with that torque spec. It's a very important torque spec. It's a big dumb animal, but you've got to play by the rules. New bolts, clean everything out, prep, 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 bearings first, and here we go, ring gear.
you can actually hear the sound change as it finds its natural seat. It's a different tone. Now, make sure it's sitting where it needs to be. My ring gear is seated. Now I like to put the lock head on just so nothing interferes with that perfect fit between the ring gear and the carrier. I'm removing the ring gear bolts one at a time, applying Loctite, then reinstalling them so I keep the location and the seated position of the ring gear on the center section differential. The electric impact gun is just to run the bolts in quickly. No torque is being applied. The torque spec for the ring gear bolts, 65 foot-pounds. So I'm just using a cross pattern to run them up. The pinion bearing gets pressed on using the old bearing carrier. Then the pinion is installed. And using the old pinion nut, the crush sleeve gets compressed to set the proper preload which is checked with an inch-pound torque wrench. Next, the new Detroit TrueTrack differential gets installed and the side spacers and retainers reused to hold it in place so we can check the wear pattern on the gears. When I was tearing this down, I placed everything on a cart so it could be easily reinstalled in the same orientation. An acrylic hammer helps persuade the spacers in place without damaging any machine surfaces. After brushing on the supplied marking compound onto both sides of the ring gear teeth, a couple of revolutions will tell us how happy the ring gear and pinion is with each other. The pattern is just right, so we can torque things down to the correct torque spec and move on. The new pinion seal is part of the installation kit and will make sure Zed Sled won't mark its spot every time we park it. Again, an acrylic hammer is a great tool to have and handy in a project like this. After bead blasting the yoke in our Eastwood cabinet and applying a coating of XO armor to protect the natural look of the metal, we can run in the new pinion nut for the final time and test the preload again to make sure it's got the correct drag. the sound change. Stop beating. <laughs> now the seal. The Eastwood 10-piece bearing and seal driver kit was a necessary tool for this project, allowing us to safely install all the bearings, inner races, and seals without damaging the machine surfaces. There it is. When the sound changes, stop beating on it. Okay, once we verify the bearing is free spinning, a little bit of bearing grease on the seal itself prevents a dry contact when you slide your axle in and minimizes the chance of burring or even tearing this, uh, this very important guy right here, the seal. Hands on Cars is brought to you by the Eastwood Company. When you're restoring a car, truck, or motorcycle, Eastwood has everything you need to do the job right. Eastwood, since 1978. Now from the outside, this may not look like a high-end custom shop, but we're at Blast from the Past in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and the owner, Bill Borneman, is gonna give us a personal tour. You gotta see this. Bill, you've got an amazing operation here. The more I see, the more I wanna see. Give me a tour of what's going on. Tell me about it. Well, Kevin, I'm glad you like what you see, and I'll give you a tour. What we do here is everything from maintenance and upkeep to full rotisserie restorations to brand new cars, street rods, muscle cars, you name it. 
I see one of everything. Beautiful street rods, traditional restorations. My dad used to work at an AMX dealer, so the hair on my arms is standing up in here. This 32 Ford, unmistakable grill, not the original engine. Talk to me about the, the drive well, basically it's thing. a 28 with a 32 grill. Ah, okay. Uh, this was a car that was started about 35 years ago and got left at a bad shop. They pulled it out of the shop, they stuck it in storage for 30 years, and about a year ago, the people contacted us and this is what you see now, you know? Well, the fit and finish is incredible. Beautiful paint work. Obviously, you've got a talented staff. How many people work here? We have 14 employees all together. On an average, we're somewhere between 25 to 32 cars in the shop at any given time. Wow, that's great. Well, you got the building and the square footage to cover it. So I see Super Sport, I see 327 badging, but that's not a 327. No, it's not, Kevin. It's an LS3. And actually, the customer that owns this bought this car new in 1966, and he brought it to us now, and he wanted it upgraded to modernization. LS3, 4L70E, uh, Global West tubular upper lower control arms, coilovers, uh, four link in the back, nine inch, yeah. four wheel disc brakes, modernization. It's modernization because you've got an LS engine in it, but you've got the Chevrolet script on the valve covers, or they're actually the Holly full valve covers that cover up the coil packs, right? That's correct. So That's correct. you've got a nice balance of, obviously it's not an old engine, it's a late model engine, but it, it just ties in, so very nice work, man. Thank you, that's what we want to do. We want to try and keep with the error. Very cool, very cool. So I see steel, I see fiberglass. Tell me about the truck. Well, it, yeah, you're right, steel and fiberglass, but we stretched it four inches. It's got a four inch longer frame. The doors are four inches longer, and we moved the firewall forward four inches. So I'm 6'2", and I'm going to have eight inches more room in it. I'm going to be able to drive it. We have an unconventional engine in it from what's normal. We put a SVO 2.3 intercooled turbo motor in it by Ford. Nice. And uh, I plan on going coast to coast with it next nice. year. Nice, nice. With great gas mileage, too. I would think so. In the fab shop, a chassis jig is not something that you see every day. Tell me what you've got set up here. Well, what we do is we're actually a manufacturer for a company called Chassis Concepts. We build the C2 and the C3 chassis, all mandrel bend to go underneath, obviously, C2 and C3 Corvettes. Yeah. But what's ne neat about it is, is we actually put C4 or C5 front and rear suspension under it. Right. So now you can take that classic C2 or C3 Corvette and you can take it out and you can drive it like a, like a new one. Yeah. You know? And they're set up for LS motors if the customer so desires to do that so you have the power of the new ones too. This is what, it, what it's all about. This is want to make it handle and drive like a, like a brand new one, you know? Well, people think about these cars, they remember them better than they were when it comes to handling and stuff. So this solves problems. Well, this is awesome, but don't get me wrong, I want to see the MX concept car. Show me the crown jewel. All right, here. let's go, we'll do, okay. go do that. So I'm seeing cues from production cars here, but I see a blended Gremlin and an AMX. Tell me about this thing. Well, American Motors in 1967 built a car called the AMX GT. What it was, it was the predecessor to the Javelin and the AMX, and they mm -hmm. built it for the New York Auto Show. It was to get the people in to sign contracts and buy them, and they only ever built one, and then of course everything evolved to what we know today of what mm -hmm. the Javelin's AMX. We have a customer that loves American Motors and decided he had to have this car so we're recreating it, but we're recreating it a little bit different. The original car never had a drivetrain in it. It was a push in, push out. This car, we did a full chassis in it. We put C 2005 C5 Corvette front and rear suspension with a complete transaxle torque tube and everything. It's gonna have an LS3 E-Rod motor in it. So it'll have the catalytic converters, charcoal canister and everything. It'll be 430 horsepower, it's gonna be a full roll cage. Yeah. We'll be able to take it out to the track, have fun with it and just you know, drive it for all its worth. So obviously you're, you're working off of archival photographs from the auto show, right? That's right, and, and there really aren't a lot of photographs available. Uh, there were never any shots of the interior. It was only shots from the outside, you know, and that's basically what we're doing. And uh, basically what we did, we started out with a 68 uh, Javelin. From the front bumper to the back door is a Javelin. We took the fender flares out of a Gremlin and the roof panel out of the Gremlin, yeah. and the rest of it were hand building out of sheet metal, and English wheeling, and you know, doing all the uh, all the other fabrication. Yeah, so it's fascinating to see it in this stage because you can almost see the ideas happening and how you're recreating things. For instance, your relief cuts here, and you're drawing from the exactly. homage of of the uh, the original vehicles, right. so it doesn't look out of place. Right. Very cool stuff. And what, and what you were saying about the cuts—that's how you make it all fit together. Yeah, yeah, because it's got a flow. It can't look like 
you know, car salad. It has to look like the manufacturer intended it to look. And yeah, it's the things that people don't notice that make a nice car. Absolutely. People don't realize that. It's the subtle little things that, that your eyes pass over. Your eyes want to see perfection and style. And you guys are nailing this as far as the proportion, flow, style lines. Uh, this is going to be an incredible car when it's done. When's the target date for finishing this? Well, we'd like to get it done by the end of the year if we can. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of work to do between now and the end of the year. We'd yeah. like to take it to Detroit for the auto rally. Yeah. But uh, whether we make it this year or not, I don't know. We'll wow. see. Very nice stuff, man. Yeah. Well, everywhere I look, there's craftsmen. You've got a great crew, very talented guys. Thank you so much for showing me around. Well, you're welcome, Kevin. We're glad you came in today. And, you know, welcome to come back anytime. Well, do I get a test drive on any one of these cars when they're done? Absolutely. You heard it. Hands on cars. We're out. Thanks, man. Now, before you begin this project, keep in mind that your old parts are actually good until you get that axle sealed up. They become tools, especially in the case of this side bearing, and just don't throw anything away until you're done. All right, so our true track differential is in. Everything's shimmed properly. We've got a great wear pattern. Pinion depth is correct, and we got between six and 10 thousandths clearance on the ring gear and pinion. That just allows for the oil to be circulated and do its job. Now we're ready to uh, throw the axles in, seal it up. The new axles are Moser Street axles, an upgrade from 28 to 31 splines. This, in combination with all the other upgrades, will seriously improve the strength of this rear axle assembly and the overall performance of this car. With the axles pushed in a little too far, I'm able to install the C-clips with a magnet. The C-clips are the originals and not included with the new diff, so save them. This is the entire setup of the Eaton True Track. Not kidding. The button to space the axles apart, followed by the retainer to hold the button in, which is held in place with a spring steel circlip, and that's it. That's beautiful. And that is it. I use a very thin skin of RTV on both metal surfaces in combination with the gasket for a complete seal, and this procedure has never let me down. The Classic Performance Products Anti-Roll Bar is a really trick piece, using anodized clamps on the axle tubes. There's more to this than just rebuilding the axle assembly in the housing and beefing up the internal components. There's a lot of other external stuff. There's a sway bar and some beautiful shocks. Put those sit in there right now. The new sway bar is a larger diameter than stock and uses different geometry to control body roll. Now using the bracket they provide in the kit, we're going to mark for a mounting hole on the other side of the frame rail. Then we get to drill. The end links allow for preload adjustment with the sway bar, something the stock system never allowed. So now we can actually change and tune the setup on this car instead of settling for what the factory gave us. And that is what Pro Touring is in a nutshell. All right, we're going to leave things kind of loose until we have the vehicle weight on the chassis. When everything's loaded, that's when you tighten this stuff up. We'll make sure it doesn't fall off, but we gotta get to the last project, which is disc brake conversion. The QA1 single adjustable shocks are part of the Classic Performance Pro Touring Stage 3 system that we're using on Zed Sled front and rear. We can change the valve settings on these shocks easily and tune the suspension on the fly at an autocross or at a track event. 
Along with all the other suspension details, these QA1 adjustable shocks are going to make a huge difference in how Zed Sled handles. Now the rear disc brake package from a classic performance is awesome. 12 inch rotors, all the brackets and shims that you need to properly center your calipers, a brake line mounting kit, brake hoses, and single piston calipers on the back. This thing will stop on a dime and uh, it's the last piece of the puzzle. So let's get cracking. Now this is what takes the place of the factory backing plate for the drum brake system. The grade eight hardware is provided, which is a nice thing. Makes me feel safe. But there's also several shims involved. And gravity. <laughs> and you can, uh, you can set the caliper the perfect distance to where you've got even spacing on either side of your rotor. And it might have to come on and off a couple of times, but hey, it's hot rod, no problem. We're not tightening things down. We're just snugging things up. See if we've got the correct spacing between the rotor and the caliper. All right, we got the right amount of spacing between the caliper and the rotor. Everything's centered up. Look at this rear axle. Thanks to 2K Aerospray and a little bit of diligence, it looks fantastic. It is a 12 inch disc brake rear axle with a sway bar with a better design, by the way. It ties into the frame rails now instead of the flexi or formerly flexi unibody. And we've got a Detroit True Track locker. Acts like an open diff until you hit it with some torque and then it's both wheels. So no more. <laughs> <laughs> no more one wheel peel with Zed Sled and it looks like jewelry so I can't wait until I don't know well we get to address stuff like this the body work is next because all the rust repair is done now we can hit it with some polyester surface enhancement material and uh, turn it into the car that we see in the picture. On the next episode of Hands On Cars, Kevin sprays urethane primer, preps the Camaro for paint, and takes a trip to Spring Carlisle.